Hi everyone! I got a lot of questions, a lot of DM on face on my Facebook page about uh, the processing of my green card and the most common one is the final interview, my experience in the final interview. I was one of the first few that was actually interviewed. The interview process before they grant the green card is actually it has been in play for a long time, I think, but they never really implemented it until this year. And so fortunately for me, just because it's my luck, I got interviewed. And so I got the, so this is just that maybe, I hope this, this helps you. This are some tips, ba again, based on my, my own experience. I'm not a lawyer, but this is just based on my experience and the experiences of my other friends to did it through eb2 so it's employment based as well but you she was petitioned they were petitioned by their employers and then one did an eb3 which is almost the same as an eb2 and so i'll share their experience as well i'll add it to whatever it is that i'm saying i do have some notes so do forgive me if i'm glancing on it just because i don't want to forget uh, some of the things that i want to tell you okay i got my letter the notification of the interview a month before the actual schedule and then so the first thing that i did is actually call my my lawyer and she prepped me two weeks before the actual interview she did admit however that since it is there's been very very few who have been interviewed before my before me there's not a lot of sample in other words not a lot of um uh, personal accounts of their own interviews so she was basing her preparation on her judgment as a lawyer but it all worked out number one be on time I actually allowed myself two hours before the interview just because USCIS here in downtown LA is very very busy and I had to figure out whether I was going to park. I, I, made my re I did my research before that. So I decided I was going to drive and that I was going to park a block away from USCIS. It's actually not really a block away. It's right across the street. So I decided to do that. I over prepped and decided to leave my phone in my car. And so when I was lining up and they asked for my cell phone, I told him I didn't have one. He frisked me <laughs> because he didn't believe I didn't have my cell phone. But... Yeah, so it's, you're actually allowed to bring a cell phone, just of course not use it during the interview. So, but I, I was actually glad that I, I decided to come early because the, the queue going in, not even inside USCIS, but down the building, it, it was so long that I think I was, in, I was just, yeah, 15 minutes, uh, no, sorry, 30 to 45 minutes. I was lining up for 45 minutes before it was even my turn to go through the the first level of the building so be on time make sure that you allow yourself more than enough time to make it on time and then okay so bring all of your documents a copy of all of your documents i had two boxes of of evidence because uh, i had all my scripts books dvds everything that i have done in the past everything that i could of course get a copy of so all of that we were we submitted to them submitted it to them and so there were two boxes and i thought oh my god i'm not going to bring all of this to the interview so i decided to bring the the initial folder like the summary the one that my lawyer prepared the explanation of what i have done a list of whatever that folder actually had a table of contents which refers to all the evidence that we submitted so but I so I said I was going to bring that but not bring two boxes of documents I should have I should have because large part of the interview was him looking for the evidence so for example there was uh, an offer letter a job offer letter that was a part of the evidence and he couldn't find it and it was one page one freaking page and he was going around because there were so many of them he didn't know where to look and so, luckily, I had a presence of mind to remember that the, the, the document that my lawyer gave me had a, the summary of the, the credential, or the, sorry, the summary of my lawyer, of all of my credentials. It had a table of contents, and it says exactly at least what portion of that 
the boxes and boxes of documents where I can find the, the job offer letter. So I told him it's in box number one and it's blah, blah, blah. And so he was able to find it. But then I thought that if I had all of it with me, I knew me, I would know exactly where it is. I could just pick it up and give it to him. Then it would have got my interview shorter. And so there were a lot of other evidence like that where he would actually stand up and look for it one by one and there were so many of them so bring your own, own documents i don't care if you bring a cart or whatever <laughs> but just bring your own, all of your documents um, and of course know them know them so that when he asks you don't have to wait for him to find it you can just go grab it yourself and give it to him that's going to make the process faster okay uh, then my lawyer was not present during the interview. I don't quite remember why we decided she was not gonna come with me, but I think it was simply because we thought it was not necessary. Well, to a certain extent, it wasn't necessary, but he did ask me to sign a document stating that I was allowing myself to be interviewed without the presence of my lawyer. However, my other friend had her lawyer present, and she said that it was just better, at least for her emotionally and psychologically, it was better because her lawyer can actually answer in her behalf. And so there were some questions when the lawyer would just help her out. So especially in remembering dates and stuff like that, you know, small details, the lawyer, the lawyer was able to, to provide the answer. And you can actually, I think if you have a lawyer, you have the option of not talking at all. <laughs> the lawyer will just talk to you. Okay, so bring your lawyer. Uh, you are going to be thrilled about your status. So you have to make sure that you remember the dates when you entered the U.S. And then if you started working, I started working prior to the, the as soon as I got my work permit, I started working. And so make sure you remember when you actually started working for this company, have a copy of the offer letter. And then if you change jobs, then when did one job start and when, when the other job end, whatever, you know what I mean. So. If you're, if you're a student, if you were a student here, then you have to remember the dates when you applied for the F1, blah, blah, blah. If you changed schools, remember when you changed school and stuff like that. So, and remember the exact date. You can't say, let's say like June 2015, something like that. You can't, you have to, sh to actually remember the exact dates. So that actually is when the preparation of my lawyer came into play because she made me remember all of that dates all of those dates because i'm very bad at remembering dates. i forget my own birthday sometimes so <laughs> so remembering all the employments and oh my god i it was just but she made me remember so that that was helpful so make sure that you you remember all of the dates and make sure that there is no gap that you're covered every step of the way and that you were never out of status at any time okay uh, they are going to verify your personal data and so that includes your birthday, birthdays of your parents, your siblings, family members and all of that. They are going to ask you about it. So know all of that. I almost forgot the exact date of the birthday of my sister. <laughs> Which is not surprising because I forget even my own birthday. So they are going to ask you about that. They are going to ask you about addresses, which includes your address, all of your past addresses. He scolded me because I messed up one of the apartment numbers. And so I moved like four times. In the, in, since I moved here, I changed up, I moved to different apartments. And in one of those apartments, I forgot the actual apartment number and he, he called me out on it. So remember to make sure that you have all of that uh, in your head and then they are also going to ask you for the addresses of your employers if you've ever worked if you've changed employment then you're going they're going to ask you for the addresses phone numbers names of, the, of your employers names of your office mates they're going to ask you about it so remember the names complete names not just like the actual the first name but complete names of your employers uh, and then remember your boss like for example the ceo is not necessarily the name of the company so you need to know the exact name of the company and of course the names of your bosses and, of, and names of your your employers uh, and your office mates and then if you if you're a student they're going to ask you about your school when you started studying when you applied for your f1 when you applied for your i whatever all of your your petitions and stuff remember all of that uh, and remember the exact date okay 
they are okay so for i was eb1 and so for my friends eb2 and eb3 they were asked to describe what they are going to do for this company so by the time they were interviewed they already started working for the company because they got their 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 work permit and so they were asked to describe what they were doing on a day-to-day -day basis which is quite simple because they were doing it already so they know it by heart in my case because i was eb1 i was asked to describe everything that i have done in the past <laughs> all the evidence that i presented so movies books um, I was in the advertising industry for uh, for a decade and so I was asked about all of those works, the commercials that I did, print ads and stuff, all of that. The, I was asked about it and it wasn't just, what is this? It wasn't like that. He asked me for the summary, for the characters and stuff and then at the, at the time of the interview, I was already developing my comic book and some stories and so he asked me about it as well. He asked me to pull up my website and stuff and so that was a huge part of the interview like I think we spent more than just by itself probably more than 30 minutes on that so he he also asked me some intimidating questions like if you're doing so well in your country why did you decide to move here <laughs> and then I had several jobs I always had two jobs two to three jobs that was just how it is for me. That's how I always did things. And he asked me about why, why I had to do two to three jobs if I was getting paid well enough. And so I had to explain that it was just my nature. I like working. So be prepared for questions like that as well. I think it's just their way of making sure that whatever it is that you claim is actually true so you're not just like it's, it's, nothing of what you said is yes <laughs> I think the funniest part is the standard question so he had this list of questions which is like 30 or 40 questions there were a lot I don't know exactly how many those were but those he said that those were standard questions um, but one that really stuck in my mind is because I find it so funny was when he asked whether I had any plans of committing polygamy <laughs> And I almost said, I can't even get one. You, you think I'm going to get multiple partners. <laughs> but anyway, of course I can't say that. <laughs> and then other questions like, have you ever committed, the, have you ever done anything that threatened the life or safety of uh, a citizen of America? And I actually said no and then went back. And then I suddenly panicked because I remember that I had three parking tickets. <laughs> And I don't know if they would consider that a, a threat to the life of an American citizen. But I had to say it. I was under oath. So I actually told him two questions after. I said, can we go back to that question? I just remember that I had to tell you this. That I actually had three parking tickets. <laughs> and he said that it was fine. And the pretty standard questions. So, oh yeah. So uh, you are going to be asked to take uh, an oath that everything that you say is correct and true and to the best of your ability or your knowledge okay so that's it i think um based on the experiences of my three other friends who were all interviewed after me one was interviewed a month i think or a month and a half after me they were there for uh, i think just a little over 30 minutes or if not less than 30 minutes I was interviewed for more than an hour and as I've said the actual interview on my past credentials all the evidence that I've presented that in itself was more than 30 minutes and so I think the difference is that primarily one I think the primary difference is that by the time they were interviewing my friends they already knew what to ask <laughs> so like they already had a like a standard flow they were all already experienced and trained when they were interviewing me they were probably just as lost as I was so <laughs> um, so they were there shorter than I was shorter than I was so they were there for 30 minutes and I was there for more than an hour I think like an hour and a half maybe so yeah, that's it. I, I don't know if that's gonna help you. I hope it did and I hope it will. Um, so just as a recap, be on time, bring all of your documents, know the dates, you're going to be grilled about your status. So be sure, be absolutely sure. They are going to verify it. So for example, if they ask you a question, 
and that question may be in their system, they are actually going to verify that what you're telling them is consistent with what you've written or what is showing up in their system. My friend had one of the, when she was being interviewed, the system was down. So when she was asking, when the interviewer was asking her about when she came in the US, when she applied for this and when she applied for that, when she started working for this company and stuff, she was asked to write it. She was asked to write all of the dates. And, and the interviewer said that I'm going to have to check this after the interview because the system is down. So they have a way of verifying it. Uh, yeah, so make sure you know all of the dates and make sure you know all of your, the birthdays of your fa immediate family. They will ask for the names. They're going to ask you to, to spell it out. The employers, phone numbers, addresses, make sure you know all of that. Um, what else? So yeah, and then for EB1, if you're going to go for extraordinary abilities, they are going to ask you and grill you about your past credentials. So make sure you know that by heart. Um, and that's it. Good luck.